I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways But if my Savior called me to that sweet home on high I'll live with him forever in glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live Thank you for tuning in to our Bible study program entitled Christ Mind in You, Philippians 2.5 this program is brought to you by Nathan Church of Christ in Nathan, Arkansas. Greetings, loved ones. It's truly a pleasure to study God's Word with you every time we can. We entitle our program, Christ, Mind, in You. When you learn the Bible, you're getting Christ, Mind, Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Also, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says, Paul, Paul speaking about the apostles, but we have the mind of Christ. My name is Gene Jester. I preach here in Southwest Arkansas at Nathan Church of Christ, Saratoga Southside, uh, McCaskill. And we are so appreciative to KTSS for letting us be on their television pro station on the cable system in Southwest Arkansas and Northeast Texas. And we're so appreciative to GBN for carrying this program so it can, can be seen on the Gospel Broadcast Network around the world. And we're so thankful to the eldership of, of South Avon Church of Christ in Mississippi for overseeing this program, and Don Blackwell, the great preacher who is a great director of GBN. So we're thankful for all these people. I thank, I'm thankful to God for the health to be here. Let's go to our God in prayer. Our Holy Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And Father, we know that you're the creator and giver of life, breath, and all good things. We're thankful, Father, for your holy word, which is your mind, your will, revealed to us. It is your authoritative law for us, and the new covenant we know you tell us is our law for today. And we're thankful, Father, for these precious promises we find in this book. We're thankful for the guidance it gives into salvation, by obedience to the gospel, by being born again of water and spirit. And then as the, we live the Christian life, the guidance it gives us to know how to live day by day in our daily work and lives, and know how to worship you according to the pattern you've taught in the New Testament. And Father, the great hope it gives us for, for a new body that will never grow old, a spiritual body, in the resurrection day, and in heaven for eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ and Thee. And Father, we ask you now to be with us in this study. Bless all who are hearing, that they might learn more, that we might learn more as, as we study, that we, that we might grow in faith and grace and knowledge and hope. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I want to continue today in our study on the beautiful word, sweet. I really never heard a sermon preached on this subject, but I had the idea a few weeks ago I was studying and I thought about the beautiful hymn, One Day at a Time, Sweet Jesus is all I ask, I'm asking of you. And I thought about the word sweet in the Bible and I began to look at my concordance and saw more passages than I realized using the word sweet. And so I said, I'm going to make a series of lessons on the, using the word sweet. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the sweetest one we know. He truly is that friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And so we're looking in the scriptures, and most of them in the Old Testament, on use of the word sweet. I think I have one in the New Testament later on coming in Revelation chapter 10, the way John describes eating the little book, and it was sweet in his mouth. But here today we're going to start on our second main point. It's Proverbs 13, 19, which says, The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's an abomination to fools to depart from evil. You know, this is saying to us today in the New Testament way, we should make our desire, other scriptures teach us, to please Jesus, to go by His Word and His authority. If we'll make our desire to walk in the desires of Christ, then we can please God and uh, we can also be happy. You know, I think about the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. It's not always just uh, my desire for doing I do good. Some folks, you know, get, get a satisfaction. It's sweet to their soul when they do things that they want to accomplish that may not be right. So, some folks uh, may get satisfaction out of sinning. Their desire is accomplished. Some boys, if they can get a girl to commit fornication, their desire is accomplished. Well, they've sinned against God's law. They've broken the law of Matthew 19, 9, Galatians 5, 19 through 21, and other scriptures. Uh, some folks may get a happy feeling when they have a horse that they've raised and had a trainer trained in a horse race and win a lot of gambling money and they win a big purse, a big prize. Well, that's, that's not a good thing to have a desire accomplished in. We must have desires accomplished in God's way for it to be right and, and, and make us have genuine happiness that will last. In our earthly endeavors, both physical and spiritual, it's a joy to accomplish our desires, though. I enjoy seeing 
a pupil of the Bible, study God's Word and get understanding from God's Word. You know, so Proverbs 13, 19 says the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. It's an abomination to fools to depart from evil. Fool, fools don't like to quit sinning, but if we are doing the Lord's way, way and will, it's sweet to our soul when we accomplish the desire of serving the Lord. You know, to me, to see someone obey the gospel is a sweet thing. It's wonderful to see someone become a Christian. If men will just hear the word of God, Acts 15, 7, believe it, John 8, 24, unless you believe I'm here, you shall die in your sins. Repent of their sins, Luke 13, 3, I tell you next, if you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Be baptized after we confess Christ's name. The eunuch in Acts chapter 8 said to Philip the preacher, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And, they, and the, and the uh, preacher Philip commanded the chariot to stand still. He and the eunuch, they went down in the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And they came up out of the water, and the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip. The eunuch saw him no more, and the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. He had heard, he had believed, he had confessed Christ, he had repented of sins, he had been baptized into Christ, Romans 6, 3 and 4, Galatians 3, 26 and 7, into the church of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, Acts 2, 47. He had done the will of God. And it's truly sweet to me to see someone do that. I love to see people obey the Lord. It brings happiness and sweetness to me and the person who does it above all and their family, <clears throat> but also into heaven itself. Luke 15 tells about the, the parables of the lost sheep, lost coin, and the lost boys. And in every case, when they returned, there was great joy. There was great joy in heaven over one sinner that repents when that one lost sheep was found, Luke 15. There was joy in the presence of the angels of God when that one lost coin was found, Luke 15. And there was great rejoicing at the father's house when that prodigal son came back home. And I just wish that religious, hard-hearted older brother had done the same thing spiritually instead of being jealous and envious. But that prodigal son had been off out there in the swine, he'd been out there drinking and partying and having a big time and committing adultery. The Bible would indicate in that, in that passage what the older brother said, wasted his living with harlots. He came home and the father said, this is my son that was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they had a big celebration for that boy coming home. That's the way heaven looks at it. God wants you saved if you're not a Christian. <clears throat> also, a, a desire accomplished is sweet to my soul. I think back when I was a boy. I started to preach when I was 19 years old. I always wanted to preach. My mother gave me a high regard for preachers. My great granddaddy, John Henry High, was a preacher way back in the 1800s and early 1900s. And I knew that preaching was the greatest work in the world. And I wanted to be a preacher. And so as I was uh, getting Bible study, back when I was eight, 17, 18, 19 years old, 20, 21, I prayed to God, help me find a, a good wife, a good Christian wife. And in my local community there, a precious little red-headed girl named Lucretia Bolt became my wife. She's been my wife now for be 52 years. It's coming June 15th. Desire accomplished has been sweet, oh, so sweet, to my soul, and I believe her soul too. And we desired children. While we were in our early days of marriage, we had three precious children, Tim, Margaret, and Julie. We have 11 grandchildren. Desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. And you know, I enjoy around the place. I taught school all these years and preached, and I raised cattle. I have a farm, and I raise a garden. And my wife and I enjoy raising a garden. It's, a, it's sweet to our souls to plant a garden, see it grow, cultivate it, water it, and gather in the produce. To me, that is desire accomplished. It is sweet to my soul. I love that good food. I love to share it with my family. And we love to give it to our neighbors. And so we enjoy raising a garden. It's a pleasure. It's a hobby, but it's also a... When we first got married and we first started this garden where it is now in 19... We married in 62, but started this garden in 68. Uh, you know, I felt if I could have a garden and raise food like Mother and Daddy did, I, we'd always have something to eat for my family. And we did. Along with teaching school and making a little money there and raising a few cows, working on the farm a little, and preaching in country churches. You don't expect much pay at all, but they probably got more than their money's, I mean, less than their money's worth anyway out of me. But anyway, I appreciate the opportunity to preach for all these precious people in these churches around here. You know, another thing that was sweet to my soul was uh, watching the cattle grow on the farm that I have raised. I have some beautiful heifers right now growing, and I enjoy uh, seeing those cows, especially when the grass gets green. Right now here, in, as we're recording this lesson in early March, and there's no... There's not much green grass now. It's been a cold winter in Arkansas. But thank God the heifers are looking good and, and uh, they're going to start growing like weeds when uh, this green grass sprouts out in the next few days. And so I'm, I enjoy seeing those cattle grow. And you know, I think about the psalmist saying, the cattle on a thousand hills are the Lord's. The Lord owns it all. We leave it behind and it's all in the Lord's hands. 
You know, many of you like me have worked hard and had a wife that's helped me in every way to do these things so we could, she and I finished her high school education and she helped me as I finished my college degrees, uh, bachelor's and master's and superintendent certificate, a Bible major, a counseling major, all these things as our accomplishment is sweet to the soul when these boys and girls finish their education. But that's just beginning to serve the Lord. You know, in sports and recreation, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> as a boy I loved to play baseball and basketball and I enjoyed it through high school days and even in my manhood and I enjoyed playing with my boys in the, in the yard, my daughters and my neighbors, kids come in there and we'd play basketball in my yard after school and we'd play sometime on Saturday and, and I enjoyed playing baseball with them and coaching their little league and Babe Ruth baseball teams and helping with their legion team and I just enjoyed the baseball and basketball so much. See, I saw some beautiful teams developed that I coached in Little League, Babe Ruth, and Legion as they became really good at their sport. It was a, a desire accomplished, sweet to my soul. You know, I think about in spiritual ways. To me, it's sweet to study God's Word. It is wonderful, pleasant, fulfilling, and satisfying to deliver a lesson that I think will teach people the Bible, the book that we need to know more than anything else on this earth, to which we should give obedience to obey Jesus and be a child of His. And you know, like the, the uh, Psalm said in 119, I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. That's the way I feel about the Bible. The psalmist said, I have loved your commandments, and I delight in them. Friends, I hope you have delight in the Bible. I hope you're a believer and not an agnostic, not a skeptical person. I hope you're a believer because there is the sweetest book you'll ever read. It's true. Every word of it is true. It has no errors. It is accurate. Psalms 126, 2 and 3 tells us that it's a beautiful little psalm. It says, Our mouth was filled with laughter, our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord has done great things for thee. They, sow in, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Go out and sow the seed, friends. The seed's the word of God, Luke 8 tells us in Matthew 13. So in the hearts of men, the soil. If people obey it and become Christians, you may go out, you may shed some tears when you sow it. It's hard to go out and preach and teach. The devil gets many obstacles in your way. He raises many uh, uh, obstacles and problems and difficulties. But with God's help, you can win over them and help souls learn the way to heaven. Help souls learn how to be a Christian here and thus the way to heaven in the judgment day. You may sow in some tears, you may weep as you carry out the, that seed, that precious seed, the Word of God. But doubtless, doubtless, the psalmist said, you'll come again rejoicing, bringing your sheaves with you. Those who live on a farm know what it is to plant a crop and gather the crop in. That's called planting seed and gathering in the sheaves. I've literally done that with corn as a boy growing up on the daddy's farm. We planted the seed, we raised the corn, we even shocked it and brought it on a wagon sometimes, stalking all for the cows to eat in the winter. Friends, it's precious to sow the Word of God. It is sweet. Why don't you try it? Why don't you study your Bible, be a Christian, and help spread the Word of God? Pray for us. We're here because we love you, and God loves you, and Jesus Christ died for your precious soul. Tune in next time to Christ and Man. Tell and sing my story, tell a story there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no more, no more to die. Oh, yes, I live in glory, glory by. Selected. Selected. Screen recording.